now. She's a friend of the show. But behind the scenes, interior designer Kelly Hoppen has been coping with the aftermath of an unexpected cancer diagnosis. Well, Kelly joins us now to explain more alongside Dr Sara. And welcome to you. Thank and you. I know you literally could sit here and talk about houses all day long, but the moment it comes to something oh, so like, deeply personal... Yeah, yeah. It's weird, it's weird. But thank you, because this is a really important conversation to be had. And actually, a bit of a cautionary tale, isn't it? Because... Will you explain, will you explain what happened? So, I mean, I decided to write this story in my own words today and to come on here because I'm a really sensible woman, but I, was, I literally had the fear of God in going and getting tested for more than eight years, actually, and I just kept putting it off and putting it off, and then suddenly, don't know what it was, I just decided I was going to go. I had no symptoms. And it was just a roller coaster of eight weeks of being told it was fine, going back, mm -hmm. no, it's not, then having endless biopsies. But I was lucky that it was something called DCIS in a milk duct. Um, so they removed that. But then I had to have an operation to remove all the tissue around it to make mm -hmm. sure it hadn't spread. I was lucky. Mm -hmm. But through the process, I kept thinking, I can't be the only person that feels this way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I can't be. And even since the piece came out this morning, I've had hundreds of women saying, I'm picking up the phone. I mean, it is that thing of, <sighs> like, you don't want to know what the result is. And if you go, you're going to get the result. And it's the fear of, what if it's going to be bad? But the thing is, you was, it was caught early, wasn't it? I know, but the, the crazy thing is, I, I knew that if I went and I was checked and they found something, they would be able to do something, but it's still, no. I didn't go. I kept going, no, 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 you know, like yeah. a child. I just didn't want to hear. Your um, lovely partner, John, he's oh, been by your I mean, side throughout all of this. Yeah. And he was actually really the one that pushed you to keep going and to keep getting all the checks yeah. done. Yeah, I mean, because even when I was going and they kept saying, no, we've got to do something else or you've got to go and have an... When I was having the MRI, I literally said to the woman, no, I can't do this. And they went and got John and brought him in and he wasn't yeah. supposed to be in that area. And he talked me through it and she said, we need you here every day. Yeah. Oh, you know, like, even at that point, knowing that this could save... And then they found something they thought on the left breast, but it was nothing in the end. Mm, good. But had I not done that, and even then I was willing to walk. It's crazy. It was it's, just it's crazy. Fear. Is it fear? It must... Total and utter yeah. fear and stupidity. Well, so, no, don't say that. Well... Yes, it was, and that's why, you know, I say to everyone out there, if you're frightened, go, because the, the med medicine and medical help is so extraordinary. And, you know, when I heard today that this lovely lady there is going to be checked, I'm so thrilled because I'm till, still too scared to check myself. Yeah. Aww, you know, really? I told John, you'll have to do it, and he went, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. Listen, whoever does it, as long as it's happening, it's fine. You, they wanted you to um, check for this, the BRCA gene test. Yes. So this is the gene test that you discover whether you've got an inherited tendency for yeah. certain cancers, and you were nervous about that as well. Well, I'd just, I'd just been given the results that the tissue was clear, the markers have been taken out and then Dr Choi said now I want you to go now and I kind of was like oh really yeah and um you know I was getting myself ready if I did to have a double mastectomy I you know I'm I'm a fixer and yeah. a planner that's me that's what right? you do you call me up I'll do it but already I was planning that's what I was going to do mm. so then I went down and did that and they were amazing as well Thankfully, I didn't have that, Thank so, God, yeah. you know. Kelly, has this changed you yeah. at all? In what way has it changed you? I just... I'm not going to stress about small things, and, you know, when I say I live life to the full every day, I do. I love my work, I love life. Every day I wake up and say, today is a good day, mm -hmm, good. you know? And it's different. I'm aware of it every single day because I see the scar. So I yeah. can never, ever wake up and not think about it. So going forward, when it comes to your own health, I mean, does it make you now go, right, I'm going to make sure I go and get those annual mammograms? I have and... no choice now. Yeah. Now I have no choice. So I just went and had one, and, and that was scary, but I was all clear, ran out of there, like mm. jumping. Mm. The next one is September. So, yeah, I I'm have no so choice. I'm so happy you spoke about this. But I was in here doing one of these... You know, I carried on as yeah. normal because mm. that was the only thing mm. that I could do.
Yeah, we didn't know. I was so shocked when I heard the I story. Yeah. Uh, let's bring in Dr. Sarah. How important are these appointments to attend? How important is it? I mean, routine breast screening is, is so incredibly important. We know that it saves 1,300 lives in the UK every year from breast cancer. And who's it available to? So it's available from the ages of 50 to 70. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, if you notice any symptoms and you're not within that age group, don't just wait until that point. You do seek help before then and we can get scans Prior. But your first line of defence is knowing your own breasts yes. and checking them yourself. And exactly. we're joined now by Leanne, who has agreed to have a live examination with us this morning. Leanne, welcome. Thank you for being here. You're incredibly brave doing this, but it's very important. And you, you yourself, you were diagnosed with breast cancer in, in 2021. So yeah. you want to show... And you, by, by finding in your own lump was how you got the diagnosis. Yeah. Yeah. Saved your life. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, well, thank you for doing this. Oh, no. Thank yeah. you so much. It's incredibly brave and really helpful, so thank you so much. Now, um, what I'd like you to do, if you don't mind, is taking off your um, gown. So part of the um, examination for breast is looking and feeling. So we'll start by looking. So you stand in front of a mirror, straight on, and you're looking at your breast. You're looking for any changes in shape, size, outline, any asymmetry. You're also looking at the skin, making sure that there's no puckering or dimpling on the skin, that there's no rashes, eczema, scaling, crusting. And then you're looking at the nipples, looking for any inversion or whether the nipples are pointing in any other directions, if there's any nipple discharge. And if you have got larger breasts, it's important to lift Lift up the breast as well and look underneath the this breast. This is me, too. this is this is my area. <laughs> this is our, our larger breast. Well, this is it. I'm and, so and glad you've used somebody who's got larger breasts. I think breasts it's so important because yeah. often you just see this kind of small breast and it's it's yeah. easier with yeah, smaller yeah. breasts. Mm -hmm. But it's so important to make sure that everyone is included. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and so once we finish looking straight on, we turn to the side, look in the mirror again on the side, and then look on the other side. And then back to the front, and I'd like your hands above your head. And again, you're looking for all the same things. Mm. And then hands on the hips. And then you're pushing the chest wall out. So you're pressing down and pushing down so that you can see any, any changes there. It's, it's the, we, kind of what's key here is knowing your own benchmark, isn't it? Absolutely. Because when you're looking for changes, well, if you don't check, you don't know if things are changing. That's so so it's true. really good to... No, know them. Our breasts are asymmetrical. Most people's are. So, it, you know, saying or oh, looking for different symmetry can yeah. be really difficult if you've already got asymmetrical breasts, but we're looking for a change. These are all changes that we're yeah. looking for. Yeah. So knowing your normal is the first point. Then we move on to feeling for the breasts. Now, when we're feeling the breasts, um, what, what we can do is we can either do it standing up. Lots of people do like to do it in the shower. It's just mm. a bit easier that way. But if you do have larger breasts, sometimes it's easier to do it lying down um, at about 30 degrees, so a couple of cushions on your bed. Um, now, in this case, what we're going to do is we use the pads of our fingers here, the whole of the pads, not just the fingertips, and we want to bend our knuckles and feel it that way. Now, our breasts kind of come in a, a teardrop type of shape, so you want to make sure you're feeling all the way up. And you can do it in a different way. Some people do it in a kind of lawnmower way. Some people do it in concentric kind of spokes ways. I like to do it in circles. So I start at the top, pressing quite firmly. And what are you feeling for? We're feeling for lumps here. So this is what we're feeling for. We're feeling for anything that when you press the tissue against the rib cage. Yeah. So you're pushing quite hard into the... I am, because I want to be able to push the tissue against the rib cage to Until feel, you, you feel something. if there's a lump there. Exactly. And you're, I mean, depending on the time of the month, your breasts can feel they lumpy can at feel different lumpy. times. You're absolutely right. And so breasts can feel lumpy. You're feeling for quite a firm um, lump that's not really very mobile. Often people's lumpiness in, in that kind of term of month tends to come in this top upper right, right. quadrant. Um, and so what we do is we check the other side to see if it feels feels the same right, and then okay. if it does you know it's just more of a dense tissue now you carry on doing that until you get right to the middle and you don't want to forget the nipple people often forget to press on the nipple so yeah. you want to make sure you do that too so once you've done that then we're looking at the armpits as yeah. well um, so it's easier if you put your hand on this shoulder here because it helps to relax the muscles and then you can really get in there and again you're doing the same well, I've never motion. Heard that before. And I've never done it you're that. trying to go all the way up past the hairline, you know, up uh, so the whole way of the armpit. Wonderful. That's it. great. And then you do the exact same thing 
on, on the, the other, other side, side as well. You have to do it. I set a monthly reminder in my phone. Oh, really? So it goes it goes off like an alarm and I check it every do month. Do you know what? I'm going to start doing that. Yeah. I've never done that. Not that to that you extent. Have to. I've never you done have that. To, you have to have to. It's so important. So oh, important. my goodness. So thank important. you so much. Thank you. Lee. Well done, you. Thank you. And Kelly, you know, we wish you well. We really and thank do. goodness you're at the other side of yeah, it. No, but you look perfect. amazing. Thank yeah. you. No, I'm well. I'm good. I'm good. All right. Thank you. Well, lots of love. Right.